Okay, now let's look at the block uh, data structure. So uh, when a miner pulls a bunch of these transactions in the data structure that we, we looked at uh, previously, they pull them together and they put them in a block, okay? And what the block will consist of as uh, just as a sort of reminder to ourselves at an abstract crypto level before we, we where I show you all these fields is uh, your transactions are kind of like um, leaves uh, in a tree. Uh, so these are transactions. Uh, and these will aggregate up uh, to a single value. Uh, which is called the Merkle root. And uh, this value here uh, we'll call the block header, or it's called the block header. And it also hashes in uh, the previous block header which itself has this whole tree and this whole same data structure underneath it, okay? Okay, um, and so this will be a block that's in the blockchain. And uh, the, you know, the blocks have a certain number uh, starting from the first block up to the present time. And so currently, uh, when, it, when I happened to take the screenshot, uh, this, was, uh, this is the block that the tr transaction that we looked at is in. So it, it's um, a, a new block uh, that, that was just generated recently. Uh, and anyways, this is the number of it. So there's been 500,000 uh, blocks from it, okay? Now, the block will put a bunch of transactions together, okay? Uh, the number of transactions in this block is 2,861, okay? Why is it that amount? Why isn't it more? Why isn't it less? Um, so there's some complexity here that we'll, we'll talk about when we talk about the network layer. Miners are actually free to include as many transactions as they want. Um, so they can include a lot, they can include a little, they can include none if they want. There's, there's no real incentive to do it. Um, uh, but basically what they want to do is, first off, they can't include transactions unless if there are transactions that are happening. Okay, so that's uh, going to give you an upper bound, one upper bound on the number of transactions. Okay. Um, the other thing that's, that's really important uh, for Bitcoin and something that we'll, we'll talk about uh, when we talk about further nuances of Bitcoin is that all these transactions have a size, and we talked about how size is, is sort of important. And um, what happens is uh, for a block, uh, we want to look and see uh, how big uh, that is and basically what, what does it add up to, okay? And Bitcoin has a particular size cap uh, in terms of how big blocks can get, okay? And the size uh, has been obfuscated somewhat because um, uh, there was a change, a very significant change that was made to Bitcoin in terms of how you account for the size of things. Uh, so basically, uh, proofs are held in a separate, like all the signatures and stuff are in one data structure and the transaction details are in another. So that Bitcoin didn't always operate this way. Uh, it's a brand new change or a fairly new change. But anyways, um, it, it used to be that size, the size limit, it still is to a certain extent true that the size limit is one megabyte, okay? So the reason they put this many transactions in is because when they added all these transactions up, they hit that kind of one megabyte cap. Now, it turns out that there's a, a second data structure where they can store some additional information. So it, this ends up being slightly more than one megabyte. So you can see it's 1.1 uh, megabytes, but, um, Anyway, so this is the size of, of everything. And so I'll say that it's, it's approximately equal to one megabyte. And people talk about one megabyte blocks. And the only reason it's slightly bigger is because there's, there's a second place that you can store information now. Um, so that's fine. OK. Um, OK. Uh, what else do we want to say? So if you add up all of the transactions in this block, this is the amount uh, that you happen to see. So that's um, 13,000 uh, Bitcoin. Uh, we can take a look and see 
uh, I, I'll just um, round it and I'll put in US dollars even though we're in Canada here and so you can see that it's about 80 million dollars okay uh, so this transaction moves uh, the equivalent as, as of today uh, which is when this block was created it moves about 80 million US dollars And that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean anything. It just means that that money moved right from one Bitcoin address to another. It might be one person who has eighty million dollars sending it to themselves, or they only have one dollar, but they send it to themselves, and then they send it to themselves, and then they send it to themselves eighty million times. Not it can't literally be that because there aren't eighty million transactions. But the the point is, you can't read too much in this number. You don't know how much money is actually changing hands. You just know how much money is moving from account to account. Okay. Um, so, so anyways, uh, so then they have some, some estimates for, for, for other economic things. We'll, we'll talk about the economics later, so let's just skip that for now. Uh, if you take all the fees across all of these 2,800 transactions, this is the amount that you add up, uh, that you end up with. Uh, and there's also a block reward. So this is uh, newly minted Bitcoin. And so the miner who solved this, um, that particular person, uh, what they get is they get 12.5 Bitcoin plus they get 0.11 Bitcoin. Okay, so they get to add these two numbers together and pay themselves. So I didn't include all the transactions uh, in the notes, uh, but if we go back to the block explorer, uh, what you can see is you can see uh, the same details and then you can see here's the, the actual list of all the transactions themselves. So there's, um, you know, there's thousands of transactions here, so we won't scroll through all of them. But um, anyways, there's this one special transaction at the top called the Coinbase transaction. And uh, what happens here is that there, this is a, a transaction where the miners paying themselves. Okay, so this is the miner. It's always the first transaction by convention. Uh, so that's how we know it. Um, and so the miner is paying themselves some amount of money. They're paying themselves the mine, the reward, the block reward, which is 12.5 Bitcoin plus those fees. Okay, so if you add, um, uh, if you add together uh, this, sorry, uh, if you add together this number and this number, uh, you get this amount. And then this is the address of the miner that's uh, being paid. Okay. Then we mentioned that uh, that in order to solve this block header, there's also this proof of work. Okay, so along this particular uh, link here, uh, there's also this kind of like proof of work that's involved. So this isn't just a simple straight up hash. It's a special hash uh, where the hash comes out with a certain number of leading zeros. Okay, so what is the exact what is the exact number that's sitting here? Okay, the exact number that's sitting there uh, is called is this number here. Okay, so it, it doesn't show it all, um, but anyways, this is the block header. Okay, and you'll remember the proof of work is uh, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, my my block header. It's going to be equal to the hash of three values. So it's going to equal the hash of the previous block header concatenated with some nonce. I'm allowed to choose whatever I want for that and the Merkle root. Okay, so the Merkle root is this value. The previous block header is these values. So we add these two together with a random number and we keep trying new random numbers. That's the nonce. So we keep trying new new random numbers until this comes out with a lot of leading zeros. Okay, and then when it has enough, uh, we consider it solved. And as I mentioned, the problem is a little more specific. We're actually trying to find a small number as opposed to a certain number of leading zeros. But that's sort of the convention to think of it. Okay. So the previous block, uh, this previous value here. Um, okay. So the output of this is this value. The previous value that went into to producing this value. So this value is the hash of this value. It's the hash of the nonce 
Uh, so the nonce that happened to generate this output uh, was a random number that looks like this. We don't know how the miner got this. They probably started at zero and, and went all the way up. We, that's probably what happened, but we can't say for sure. Um, and then the Merkle root uh, is here. Okay. And as you can see, there are there's slightly different uh, terminology. So they do call the Merkle root the Merkle root. Uh, they call the block header just simply a hash. And they call the previous block header a previous block instead of previous block header. Now it turns out that this, um, this uh, block uh, there's another block that has been added on since. Okay, so if we went to the brand, the, the, the newest block and no block had been added on, then in this web interface, this value would be blank. Uh, but since someone else found a solution to the next block, then it's included here as well. Okay. Um, all right, what other values do we have here? So there's some stuff relating to versions and energy consumption that we don't really care about. This has to do with how many leading zeros there are. So when we talk about consensus, we'll talk about how that number is set. Um, but, but anyways, that's, that's encoded into this difficulty. Um, and then there's some details about where this came from and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's basically what a block looks like at a kind of data structure level. Um, and of course, this is missing the actual transactions themselves. But as we saw on the website, uh, you can see a list of transactions as well.